Let's suppose that uh, t tomorrow somebody discovered a limitless free source of energy that could completely replace fossil fuels. Would that solve our problem? Well, frankly, I don't think so. For us, it, right now, it may seem like fossil fuels is the limiting factor for a continued industrial growth. But if we solve that problem and continue growing, growing our economy, growing our, our extraction and use of other resources, we'll just hit upon another one, and probably very soon. I would guess within a matter of years or, or a decade or two, we'll hit the next wall, whether it's fresh water or topsoil or minerals, phosphates, and so on. It's okay to imagine that, you know, we can, as we get to each one, we can make up for it. You know, the human mind is so, uh, you know, clever that with each one we would able, be able to find some substitute and just keep growing exponentially forever to the point where I suppose we would have a uh, human population such that there'd be 50 of us standing on every square foot of space on planet Earth. That's not going to happen. There are natural limits. Fossil fuel has been the basis of the explosive expansion of the human enterprise. Not only population numbers, but all of the material assets that we've accumulated in the, in the course of the Industrial Revolution. And this train is gathering steam. As long as energy continues to be available in excess of, of, of the ultimate demand, then the engine just keeps rolling on and rolling on and more and more people are jumping on the bandwagon. So what we're seeing here is one species among millions on a finite planet having found the key, the evolutionary key, to continuous expansion as long as that energy holds out. But the problem is, we're using the energy in ways that are undermining everything else. So if we find an equivalent to fossil fuel, if some substitute comes along, if technology is indeed as successful as economists suggest that it may well be, and there's no corresponding change in the values and beliefs and assumptions behind the growth dynamic, then the planet is doomed. I actually think by the time I finished that, I, that maybe I'm hallucinating, but that there is actually an optimistic life after peak oil if everybody quickly understands how unbelievably serious this is and starts behaving in some radically different manners. Given the situation in which we currently find ourselves, perhaps the four most powerful steps we can take are bringing population into balance with the earth and other life forms, reducing our energy consumption, supporting local organic foods that use little or no fossil fuels, and making our voices heard to awaken our politicians to these issues. Population is a very real issue, and it's the interconnection of population growth and fossil fuel consumption or resource energy consumption that we must be addressing. So many people are only looking at the fossil fuel part.
turns out when you look carefully at it, you find that the one variable that determines whether population explodes or not is the power of women in a culture. In the Middle East, for example, Saudi Arabia, population explosion going on. It's creating a real crisis for the Saudi society. On the other hand, there are countries, more secular nations in the Middle East, that are equally Muslim, but women have relatively equal power in some of those societies. Iran, for example. You're at nearly zero population growth in Iran right now, compared to Saudi Arabia. If you made sure that there was justice and economic opportunity for people in the poorest countries, people would choose to have fewer children there. And if people were consuming less here and were sharing more of what they had with the rest of the world, you actually do begin to get the outcomes that both address concerns around population as well as environmental sustainability.